So let's talk about as we examine race and education. Yeah, let's introduce everyone to our panel. To my right, we have Tina Mitran with College Visions. Now that's a group that works to help first generation students and students in low income or underserved communities prepare for college success. And next to her, we have Jay Shell Nicole, a 15 year old student organizer from the Met. Yes, we also have <laughs> Officer Emmanuel Avila, school resource officer from North Smithfield High School, and Representative Karen Alzate mm -hmm. of Pawtucket, a member of Rhode Island Legislature's Black and Hispanic Caucus. Thank you all for joining us. Jay Shell, let's start with you because we just wrapped up um, a extended period of distant learning in Rhode Island, and we know that um, it's been a bigger challenge for minority communities, minority students, in terms of access to technology, in terms of um, being able to achieve uh, equally to, the, to their peers. What was your experience like and those of your peers as well? It was very hard for me to stay focused and to stay engaged with what I was learning because at sometimes I wasn't really connecting to the material, but when you're in school, you're doing like hands-on activities, you're with your friends, they're able to help you. Um, but I wasn't able to have that. It was like just me and I had to call my mom in even to help me like stay focused and keep going. I was also taking um, a college course at the time, so I was struggling with that as well on top of that. Um, so my mom was really an amazing help, but some students don't have that. Um, they were also suffering with not having the technology that it required. Some mm -hmm. students were ha weren't having Wi-Fi on the first day of classes, mm -hmm. or they didn't have computers because they had to go to their school to pick one up because we don't always have computers at home because we come from low-income families and low-income communities, so we're not able to have those resources like white students are able to. Representative Alzate, mm -hmm. we saw that um, black and um, Hispanic students were uh, proficient um, almost half um, in terms of percentage-wise, um, what can we do? What can be done to boost th these test scores? With education, I think it's really understanding the students, understanding their background, understanding the community that they come from, mm -hmm. and building the test out that way mm -hmm. versus just giving one test that um, allows for all of the students to do it the same way. And I think we're we're starting to understand that that's now how uh, we will be able to get the best results for all of our students, especially our black and brown students. Mm -hmm. Are you pushing for change in that arena? And also talk about your legislation. That would mean that would, there would be more teachers of color in the classroom. What I really wanted to do was to bring the conversation into the state house. I think that we all know that uh, there's a lack of black and brown teachers in our um, urban communities. What I wanted to do was be able to give a voice to some of those who were yelling outside of the state house to bring their voice inside of the state house and really put it on record and really educate all of us. Because um, as having a student coming in, letting us know what it is that they are feeling and how frustrated that they are, that maybe they're not testing well or that their teachers don't really understand their life, um, bringing that in and letting the legislators know will allow me to use all of this data, all of this uh, research that we're doing to be able to create change for the state. Tina, you are with College Visions. Yeah. Um, on both ends you've seen you were a student going through the program mm -hmm. and now you are helping other students um, graduate from high school, yeah. get into college and see them through college. You, mm -hmm. It's not just to get them in but to see them yeah. graduate. What do you think, what resources do we need to help these minority students and get help more of them? Not a lot of students can thrive in classroom settings, in those big group settings. Some of them do need individualized attention, um, but not everyone can afford having a tutor at home or having SAT prep classes and things like that. So really, how are we getting those resources to those students so that they not only have the academic tools and the um, I want to say like self-leadership tools to express what it is that they need and then express what tools aren't working for them and, and other ways that can be working for them. Um, and that goes for high school and college. And I think beyond just the academic support, a lot of those communities are suffering from trauma and emotional trauma. So how are we addressing that? How are we addressing imposter syndrome in college and really mm -hmm. helping students work through those and their identities? and reassure them that they belong there, they belong in college, and they deserve to de get their degrees as much as their white peers. Officer, I know there's been talk um, in some districts, um, some vocal um, opposition to having school resource officers in the school, and they say that position should be replaced with a different type of, of, of position. What's your reaction? What do you say to that? I've built a positive role with my students. I consider them my kids. Um, they 
they, they are the reason why I wake up every morning and I go to school and go become a school resource officer. Um, it's, it's not for a title, it's not for um, a stipend if there was one or anything like that. It's, it's for the main fact that I get to make a positive change in someone's life as a law enforcement officer and then be able to have that positive interaction and talk to them person to person, you know, and hopefully be a life coach for them. You know, if, if they're heading down the wrong path, um, whether it be substance abuse, um, you name it, you know, I'm, I'm there for them. Um, and, and then that's my role. That's, that's the positive part of, of being a law enforcement officer within school. And I don't, I don't agree that it should be taken out of schools. Um, should there be better training? Absolutely, 100%. Jay Shell, what do you think? Are school resource officers needed? In my personal opinion, I believe that um, they should be replaced with mental health specialists. Um, I've seen a lot of instances within um, friends that I know, circles that I'm in, where they've had negative experiences or they suffer from PTSD and seeing a police officer's badge gives them a flashback or an emotion that they can't handle or it even triggers them. Um, so I think really being mindful of those students and then also um, of the training. I'm not sure if you receive some type of um, like racial bias training or something like that, but that's really important, especially when working with um, working in schools that are predominantly have students of color. And it's really important to remember their stories and to hear their voices instead of um, just making decisions um, statewide. And maybe one final question for the panel. What do you see as a way to move ahead in education to help fix things? And are you hopeful that this will occur? Maybe we start with you, Representative. When our students are telling us that they need something, that they want change, I think that's the best way that we, we as le myself as a legislator um, and as a community member, we need to listen to them in order for us to all work together. So you're pledging to take action? Absolutely. Officer Avila. Um, yeah, I mean, from a school resource officer standpoint, you know, I hope we continue within the schools, within the districts, within the state, uh, to be able to affect that change from within so that those stereotypes or those past experiences can, you know, over time be changed into, you know, hey, this is how it used to be, but now, look, we're all moving forward together. I think the main thing we need to focus on going into the school year is looking at implementing a culturally re relevant curriculum. Um, so not just black history in our social studies and history classes. We need to learn about um, black writers and um, black contributions to science and black inventors and all of those things, things we never get to learn about because our, our school history has been whitewashed. So we need to be able to learn about our, cur our culture, where we come from and what's genuinely happening right now. Mm -hmm. And Tina. Yeah, super hopeful as well. I think in terms of schools and high schools in particular, we really need to invest and pay attention to who is in our communities and what are their needs. So specifically, especially for English, English language learners and undocumented students, there are very, very limited resources for them to get through school, to even think about going to college. Um, and we have a high population of those folks in Providence and in Rhode Island. So I would like to see a bigger investment in that and really offering students the resources that they need um, so that they aren't at a disadvantage to uh, the other students in school systems.